Hello and welcome to the program. Now, several days ago, Ukrainian Prosecutor General Yuri Lutsenko announced that another $200 million had been confiscated from the entourage of former President Viktor Yanukovych. Now, how significant is this step? Well, joining us is Tetyana Shevchuk. She's a lawyer from the NGO Anti-Corruption Action Centre. Hello, thank Hello. you for joining us. Thank you for inviting. Um, so, um, how significant is this step? Because um, this, uh, these different uh, anti-corruption proceedings have been going on for a long time. This is very important for anti-corruption effort in Ukraine and all the prosecution of former President Yanukovych, because now we have that actually something is happening and real money coming back to budget. But there are a few concerns with all the secrecy around the issue, because we don't know uh, whom the money was confiscated from, uh, what, was the what was the real procedure and what would be like happening with the money next. Yeah, actually, that's interesting because when I was researching for this interview, I was trying to find out whose money it was, and there was no record of it anywhere. It was just a very short paragraph that said, We've confiscated the money, and some millions are being transferred into the state budget. Um, so, why do you think it's so secret? Is it because of the, the case itself, or do you think there's another motive here? So the reasoning of prosecutor's office is that their investigation the investigation is ongoing and they have to uh, keep their secrecy of investigation just to uh, have all the leads covered and so on. But to, to my mind, the real reason is that uh, the procedure they use is not very lawful or just a response to their standards of the due process and the rule of law. Uh, so they try to cover everything in their me in the media, just not to give any public information, and just to give the great results, the great numbers: one billion confiscated, two hundred million confiscated. Well, it sounds a lot of money. No, it's good PR, I guess. It that's, sounds that, like they're doing something. That's incredible sums of money, even even in international standards of confiscation in such cases. Yeah, and is this new, this secrecy, or has this always been the case when they've been confiscating money from Yanukovych and his inner circle? It, uh, so, according to Ukrainian law, it's not possible because Ukrainian law say that every conviction should be public, mm. at least in the, like, the conviction part. And this is kind of a recent invention of prosecutor's office. They've uh, uh, they made this the, the very first decision of their like one billion confiscated. They made it state secrecy, so it's highly confidential and uh, uh, close information. Mm. Uh, kind of usually the state secrecy is something that threatens the national security. Yeah, of course. Yeah, usually this is used in sort uh, yeah, of exceptional. But, circumstances. but how come their like their uh, criminal investigation is threatening national secrecy? Is Unknown. And it's in the interest of the public as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, because the public is interested in accountable asset recovery uh, and uh, the Yanukovych case is very big, especially in the corruption situation in Ukraine and all the happening like last three years. Uh, so the public wants to know what really happened and no answers are given. I see. And um, no, the methods that the prosecutor's office are using to get these assets back, um, are they up to European standards? Is this why they are hiding it, because you know, that they're not up to European standards? So we don't know because yeah, we yeah. don't we don't have any information. But uh, that's like an assumption that if they are hiding, they, they ha then they have something they have something to hide in this situation. Of course, if a European standard is if there are, like assets are confiscated from the person, a legal person, uh, this person should have a right to present uh, its case or her or his or her or case defense. in the, yeah, yeah. In the uh -huh. court. It's uh, and it's a like, Ukrainian obligation under European Convention of Human Rights to uh, uphold the standards of due process and the right to, to fair trial. Mm. And um, this secrecy and this like semi-legal. Uh, procedures it can indicate the violation of the right to free trial and the right of these persons to further appeal this case to the European Court of Human Rights, for instance. Yeah. And um, I wanted to ask you in more broader terms, our last question uh, in broader terms, uh, for you working in uh, sort of anti-corruption as a, as a lawyer, um, how do you deal with uh, these assets that were stolen during the Yanukovych regime? They were sort of sent abroad to these um, offshore accounts, many of them are very shady. And then they come back to Ukraine as investments. So how do you track? I mean, um, all these uh, these different assets. 
So as I work for non-government uh, organization, my, uh, my and our instruments are very limited. So usually we just trace the companies which were uh, of their ownership of Yanukovych and his associates and looking what their, their business deals and so on. But their law enforcement agencies have the right to see into their banking accounts, banking transactions, uh, to follow them all around the world and see what really happened. Yeah, and do they have many powers? to um, confiscate the assets, even if they've gone abroad and they come back again? That's a complicated issue. The firstly, they need to, uh, under international standard, the firstly, they need to have a conviction here at home uh, to proceed with their confiscation abroad. Mm. So there should be like a conviction saying that, so that this and that asset should be confiscated. And then it's sent to the uh, foreign country, foreign counterpart, uh, asking to enforce that decision. Mm. Uh, so, as, um, at this moment, you don't see such convictions. Yeah. OK. Well, thank you very much thank for um, coming into our studio. And um, yeah, best of luck with all your work. Thank you. Uh, that was Titiana Shevchuk. She's a lawyer from the NGO Anti-Corruption Action Centre. You're watching UATV.